Let's move on. Let's do it. A heartbreaking defeat for chat in the Western Conference Finals. The Thunder will play the Wizards. The Heat blow it again. I can't believe it. In fairness, the Wizards do have John Wall and Dirk Nowitzki. But at the same time, my goodness. My goodness. You guys would have beaten him. You guys would have beaten him. I'm sure of it. That's crazy. I bet Dirk's happy he signed there. It's FIFA called FC. It is. It is, but people will just always call it FIFA. The winner of the finals. John Wall, Dirk Nowitzki, and the Washington Wizards beat the Thunder in five. The Wizards have won a title before the Big Three Heat. I got nothing. This has been... This has been crazy, man. This has been crazy. Like, you get a look at the champions we've seen so far... Chicago, OKC, OKC, Chicago, Washington. <laughs> Insane. Insane. Wow. Well, we move on to another offseason that I really didn't think we'd see. Player retirements, Tim Duncan is gone. Jermaine O'Neal, Richard Lewis, a lot of notable names. Of years past. Ah, oh, not Michael Red. I don't want to live in a world without Michael Red being in the NBA. Yao Ming's gone. Birdman. Tony Allen. God bless Tony Allen. Ozzy, what's up? What do you think of the PHL draft? I'm happy, man. I'm, I am very surprised that uh, a couple of people weren't drafted, but there might have been reasons for that. Maybe there are doubts about whether or not they'll play. The Hall of Fame. I love that picture, by the way, of Pippen and Rod. <laughs> the fuck? Hall of Fame inductees, Tim Duncan. No real surprise. I mean, it's Tim Duncan. So, uh, In terms of Jersey retirements, Yao Ming and Tim Duncan. That's about right. Historic changes. Division winners will no longer automatically get the top three playoff seeds. So that's huge. Uh, and introducing an incremental luxury tax that severely punishes teams that spend well past the cap. Oh, <laughs> uh, we got the logo and uniform change for the Sixers. The logo floor and uniform change for the Bucks. The wholesale change for the Wiz. A logo and uniform change for the Raptors. A uniform and floor change for the Bulls. A complete change for the Clippers. A change of logo and floor for the Hawks. Jesus Christ. Oh, we're changing all of it. We're changing all of it. If we're not in control of the team. We don't get veto power. We're changing all of it. It's going through. It is going through. The 2015 Draft Lottery. Does see me with Milwaukee's pick, but God, that Clippers logo sucks. God, that Clippers logo fucking sucks. Uh, Milwaukee's pick was lottery protected, so I'm not going to be holding that pick. So this will be the first year that neither of us have um, a lottery pick. Yeah, there you go. So the Bucks will be selecting at 12 and 14. The Cavs have picks at 18 and 22, while the Timberwolves pick at 29. The San Antonio Spurs get the number one overall pick in this draft. So two late picks for me and a very, very late pick in the first round for you guys. As we head to the NBA drafts. With the first overall pick, the San Antonio Spurs select Carl Anthony Towns. 
Gonna try to replace Duncan somehow, you know? The Utah Jazz at two. Again, I love Tiny Silver. It's amazing. Pingus Tingus on his way to the land of the Mormons. Porzingis on his way to the Jazz. The Dallas Mavericks at three select Devin Booker. Devin Booker and Kobe Bryant on the same team. At four, the LA Lakers select a generated point guard, Lawrence Thurmond. Philadelphia at five, take D'Angelo Russell. The Knicks at six. Justice? Justice! Justice? Justice! I... Justice! <laughs> Amazing. At seven, the Detroit Pistons take Trey Lyles. Phoenix Suns at eight. Miles Turner. The Nets of Brooklyn at nine. Frank Kaminsky. Yeah! Frank Kaminsky, what a man. What a man. They do generate players, yeah, because they don't have the rights to everybody to fill out the entirety of the draft, yes. The third, yes. Frank Kaminsky, the third. At 10, the LA Clippers. Trade the pick. For James Johnson and a first rounder in 2019. At 10, the New York Knicks selects Willie Colley Stein. Ben Simmons does not go in the top 10. <laughs> Unbelievable. What a, what a top 10 for Kentucky. At 11, the Atlanta Hawks have also traded the pick. Everyone's like, get us the fuck out of here. We don't want to take Ben Simmons. They trade Leroy Hardy and the 11th overall pick for Mike Bridges in a lottery protected 2017 first. The Milwaukee Bucks have picks 11, 12, and 14 at 11 shooting guard Chris Connor at 12. Damian Long, another shooting guard. <laughs> the Celtics at 13. Harry Wood. Isn't Simmons 2016? Oh, shit. Yeah, he might be. Damn it. I saw. I thought we saw him in the uh, the mock draft, though. And at 14, the Milwaukee Bucks, Kelly Oubre, the Oubre. The Trailblazers at 15. Trade the pick. Oh, Simmons is 2016. There you go. I could have sworn I saw him in the mock draft, though. I thought for sure he was 2016, but then I could have sworn he was in the mock draft. The pick and Franklin Harrison for Paul Millsap in a second. So the Clippers are back on the board in a 15. They take Royce O'Neal. The Denver Nuggets at 16. Larry Nance Jr. And Nolens at 17. Willie Hernan Gomez. Hernan Gomez. Uh, please tell me there's somebody that wants my pick. Yes. Thank God. <laughs> I did not want to take anybody that was left. Holy shit. Holy shit. What a lifeline. I mean, who the hell is even left? Like, Montrez Harrell was there, wasn't he? Maybe <laughs> Looney might have still been there. Thank God. Uh, Wally Bledsoe, no thank you. Jordan Crawford, eh. Leroy Hardy, and, oh god. Chicago's, ooh, two first round picks from Chicago. Not bad. Not bad. Two first round picks from, oh no, just a first rounder from Boston. JJ! Love me some JJ Redick. Veteran Joe Johnson, I'm not giving up two first to get him. Miami's first and 17. Dante Cunningham. First from Sacramento, TJ Weber. Larry Sanders. Nelson Baron Davis, two old men. Uh, Thomas Jeffries, B minus potential. Eh. Jordan McRae, Andy Bailey, Tory Craig. A lot of these offers honestly kind of suck. Yeah, most of those offers were trash. Um, that said, and I should have gone the other way. I'm going to take the two first-rounders, Mr. Terrence O. How are you, friendo? I'm going to take this deal from the Bulls. I know the Bulls are good, 
Um, but I like my odds of, hey, they might decline and what happens. Did I ever make a custom played up map? I did not. I did not. I only played on the, uh, <laughs> the ones that were suggested there. Got to go with the two first from Chicago. I don't really want to make this pick, so. Why, Terry, are you just looking for random maps for the added challenge? I'm going to trade the 18th overall pick for two first round picks from the Chicago Bulls. That's a done deal. The Bulls at 18 take Juan Toscano. I want a big map. That's fair. Yeah, I, I ended up just going to one of those random sites that have the, the seed codes and just had the freaking huge ass floor. So, uh, 19. Oh my God, I have pick number 22 as well. Jesus. Was one of the Bulls pick wasn't pick nine, number 19, was it? Jesus. At 19, the Charlotte Hornets take a guard, Andy House. The Magic take Tyus Jones. The Washington Wizards at 21. Terry Alvarado. Oh, my God. Harrell's still there, isn't he? And at 22, the Cavs have to make the pick. Okay. TJ McConnell, Terry Rozier, Bobby Portis. Harrell is still there. Oh, Montrezl. <sighs> Is your fucking father Snoop Dogg with a name like that? The fuck? Um, <sighs> I mean, it's a point guard or a power forward, clearly. Clearly, it's a point guard or a power forward for myself here. Um... I'm mean, going to have Bino there, Campazzo. Another point guard wouldn't be bad. Power forward. I'm losing Hickson, but I have Draymond and Robert Covington behind him. Another point guard to move up. Bino Utrecht might not be the worst option. I don't really think I can necessarily go wrong here in having to make the pick. But if get a power forward, go for Bobby Portis. It's not a bad idea. It's not a bad idea. I mean, there's, uh, man, fucking. Harrell is probably the. It's an argument for him being one of the better players in this draft, obviously. Um, who do I want to go with? Who do I want to go with here? I at least have these two scouted, so it's actually worth checking out list of potentials. Oof. So McConnell's just going to be good. Only one badge for Terry Rozier. That's pretty rough. Like, I know he's basically a 72. I'm a little bit worried about my depth at point guard. Bino Udrit there, but I do have the depth at power forward. But then again... I'm losing the other option. I'm just worried about the fact that it's like a man's only six foot six and he has power forward and center. That's a little bit concerning. You're six seven, not six six, but this is uh, a tough one. TJ McConnell really might not be that bad. He might not be. Um. I'm going to go with my gut on this one. I'm going to go with my gut on this one and take Harrell. I'm going to do it. Feeling like he's the best player available. I'm going to do it. Welcome in Montrezl. The Raptors at 23 take Gary Outlaw. 24, the Houston Rockets are going to trade the pick. No, they take Javonta Green. Raptors again now at 25. Josh Richardson. You got the Bulls at 26, Bobby Portis with the fucking glasses. Incredible. Utah at 27, TJ McConnell. And the Thunder at 28, Will Ramos, the singer. So that leaves Chats Timberwolves at 29, having to make the pick. Um, center is the biggest need for you, although... I mean, really, 
honestly, you're probably looking at one of these three. What is my shirt? Uh, this is the uh, the infamous, the legendary Brian Five or Six Ottawa Senators logo design. Um, because, of course, it is. Uh, but yeah, I'll give you guys a look at the roster again. Uh, point guard, obviously, you got Paul and Lawson still locked up. Uh, shooting guard is Clay Thompson, who is going to need a new contract, but he's an RFA. You don't have anything behind him. Uh, forward, you have Granger and Smith. Power forward is Kevin Love and Johnny Higgins. And then at center, Lyles needs a new deal, but he has an option. Plumley will need an option, too. Um, best thing you could do right now is shooting guard depth behind Clay Thompson. That or try to improve on Johnny Higgins. But every position you have some depth in except for shooting guard. So, well, the problem is Richardson is a, he is a depth signing at this point. You know, that's the problem. So, uh, someone like Gerald Nance would certainly fit what uh, you're potentially looking for there. Or you start to dip down into the C-minus territory. Looney's there. Um, there's going to be quite a few C-minuses here. So. Let me see the potentials. Again, the only guys that are going to have potentials are like these top couple options that you have info on. And it's not always correct. And no one's listed as better than a B-minus. This is the one game where like listed potentials, especially for the historical drafts, really aren't that good of an option. So, well, tell you what, because I'm seeing so many different names: point guard, shooting guard, forward, power forward, center. We're at least going to bring it down to what position you want to go for first, and then we'll find out the individual player. But yeah, I'm seeing too many names being uh, being brought up. Have it be worth it right now. Let's see. Backup shooting guard was the uh, the one depth position you needed with Richardson's deal up. So, see if that's the way that you guys go. Well, you take a shooting guard. Yeah, it's pretty much decided. It is pretty much decided. So, um,. I mean, I imagine it's going to be Nance that wins. I would imagine. Um, I mean, I'm going to put in the top four dudes that are there based on those ratings, but I imagine it's Nance at this stage now for you guys. Let me know if you disagree. J.D. Anderson's the only generated player of the bunch. Is it going to be Gerald Nance? Some votes for uh, Mr. Osman. No love for Pat Connaughton. <laughs> He's restless already. He's tired of your shit. But, yeah, it's looking like Nance or Osman here. If it ends in a tie, it goes to a coin toss. So, just keep that in mind. Ends in a tie, we go to a coin toss between the two most voted upon people. <sighs> see who it's going to be. About 10 seconds left. Nance has pulled ahead. Chat making a fucking meal out of this. Congrats to Gerald Nance, the newest member of Chat's Minnesota Timberwolves. So with that, we can sim ahead to the next pick, which is a Timberwolves pick. And, uh, well, you're going to get to go with uh, Mr. Irrelevant. You could take one of these generated forwards, or you could just take Christian Wood, because, hey, he's a center. Why not, right? Why not just take Christian Wood? People are saying Christian Wood. There you go. Christian, congratulations. You are Mr. Irrelevant. AFC, what's up? It's been a while. Been extremely busy. Cleveland sports fan my entire life. I'm extremely sad about what happened. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it earlier on. It's, uh... Maybe the worst sports injury I've ever seen that hasn't resulted in death. It was that fucking bad. Uh, but yeah, Carl Anthony Towns, Pingus Tingus, Devin Booker, your top three in this draft as we will get a look here. Nance. 
71 overall, 22 years old, B potential. He's okay. And Christian Woods, a 68 at 19, B minus potential. Honestly, for a Mr. Irrelevant, that's not bad. That's not bad. Oh, yeah, the injury was that bad, Mac. I honestly don't recommend looking. So, yeah, no reason to not bring in those two on pretty cheap deals, all things considered. And for me, Montrezl. Only a C potential at 21 years old. That's why I traded my other pick. He is a 73, so he at least has a depth option that I needed. I will sign him, um, but oof. Oof is all I can say. In terms of the options, for you guys, it's Hal Lyles, who is still your starting center. Plumlee's behind him. You pretty much have to pick up the option on both uh, and then hope to trade to get a better center. Um, unless you wanted to be like, oh, maybe we can find a free agent, but there's really no reason to cut Plumlee um, given how cheap he is because he should be easily flippable. But if you wanted to make that choice, you could. Uh, for me, Draymond, Campazzo, McCollum, Covington. Um, picking up all of them. Um, I mean, Plumlee with that A potentially should be movable. So. Should be movable. All right, we're keeping all of them. It's a smart decision. LeBron James, Dwayne Wade, and Chris Bosh have all opted out in Miami. Oh, my God. I think I still have a pick or two of theirs, too. Noah, Nowitzki, all free agents. I'm bringing LeBron home. I know he and Kawhi play the same position. I got to try to bring LeBron home. That's my only choice. It's my only choice if I have the money. Get to qualifying offers. All right, so Kawhi is technically an RFA, as is Morris. So... Again, RFA is we are allowed to send offers to, um, but obviously, you know, we can end up matching deals. Uh, for you guys, Clay Thompson will be an RFA, so you can uh, offer him money, but then obviously that'll affect what you have available for free agents. Um, so free agency, LeBron James is out there, Kawhi as well, even though I have the room to match. It is worth noting for you guys, you have about $2.58 million to spend. Um, there is nothing you can do in free agency. There's nothing you can do. The money that you just resigned people to, you have no money. Uh, the most you are going to be able to do is to bring back Clay Thompson because of the bird rights. That's, that's literally all you can do is bring back Clay Thompson and offer him a deal. That's all you got. So... Uh, with that, I imagine there's no disagreement in just sending an offer to Clay rather than matching what somebody offers him, right? Just do it. You guys are going to be in the overage, but deal with the consequences later. All right, well, there you go. Clay Thompson, send him a deal. For my Cavaliers, I will be sending Kawhi a deal, as I am allowed to do. And I will be sending Marcus Morris a deal, as I am allowed to do. And I am still allowed a different free agent signing. Because again, we are allowed to offer deals to our RFAs. Really quickly, point guard, fuck, Rondo's a UFA, huh? Rondo's a UFA at point guard. I have to consider that, especially because he only has one offer right now. It is from Boston. That's tough. He has a, uh, a 100 from Boston. Shooting guard, Dwayne Wade. Has a 100. Oh my god, the Wizards. The Wizards. Jesus. The Wizards might be the next ones. There's Nick Young, who does not have a current offer. I don't think he's quite good enough. Then a forward is LeBron. Obviously, there's going to be a lot of competition for LeBron. <laughs> a lot. But then there is Rudy Gay. But it doesn't make sense to go for Rudy Gay if I'm going to keep Kawhi Leonard. The only reason to go after LeBron is because it's LeBron. Power forward is Dirk. Dirk's got some big offers. The Pacers and the Suns especially. 
Also a veteran, Amari Stoudemire, Bosch. I mean, there's some big power forwards this year. And then at center, DeAndre Jordan. You also got Joe Kim Noah as well. Brooke Lopez. So if I look at my team right now, point guard, Bino Udrith, Campazzo. Shooting guard, McCollum and Smart. Kawhi at forward. I thought Hickson was going to leave, but I guess he has one year left. We got Draymond and Hickson. And then Pau Gasol is still here. <sighs> so DeAndre Jordan has offers. There's no real reason to go after a center, given that I already have Pau Gasol. Power forward. I have Draymond. I could go for an upgrade there, but that's a short window. It's got it's got to be LeBron. I mean, if I get LeBron James, I'm instantly a championship favorite. Whether or not that means I have to trade Kawhi, who knows? But if I can get LeBron, I have to do it. If I can repeat history, I can't afford him. I can't afford him, everybody. The LeBron dream is dead. The LeBron dream is dead. He's too expensive. I'll focus on Kawhi then. All right. Uh, just for shits and giggles then really quickly. Rondo. I could probably work out a deal for Rondo. It's it's not looking amazing, though. Especially, too, he had a max offer from Boston. I'm out on Rondo. Uh, D-Wade. Can't afford him. Can't afford him. So, at best, I'm looking at Nick Young in that position. Power forward, Dirk. Can't really afford him. I could go after Amari Stoudemire or Chris Bosh. Okay. I'm down to three. I'm down to three. Got Hickson and Green at power forward. Get the upgraded shooting guard. And then move either McCollum or Smart. Not quite the guy I was thinking I was going to go for, but Nick Young might have to be the guy for me. He's 30 years old. Stoudemire and Bosch are older. Then again, if I get one of these two to try and play... Uh, like if I were to get Chris Bosch to try and play defense, Stoudemire has the physicality that Bosch doesn't. Um, blank guard is my biggest need at this point, yeah. Can't believe it. I mean, Nick Young at shooting guard might help me get a different power forward or a different point guard. Crash, I don't know. I'm going to go for Nick Young. He's about the best I can get right now. I'm still going to have to move people out. Kemba was an RFA. They are very, very tough to land. Because, again, they'll be able to match whatever offer. I'd love to land Kemba Walker. <sighs> I just I don't feel like Big Young's the guy to bring in. Especially because he's 30. Yeah, me having a money shortage right now doesn't help. I were to go for DeAndre Jordan. I mean, the Rockets pretty much have him locked up, though. You know what? I am going to go for Kemba Walker. RFA, it's unlikely. But Kemba Walker would change my team in a big-time way. That's my offer. Chats, Timberwolves, not much you could do, but you did manage to re-sign Clay Thompson. As was the goal, renounce the rights on everyone else. For myself, Kemba has accepted, but are they going to match? Kawhi, Morris, and Walker. I would have to drop Reggie Bullock. 
But I mean, sacrificing Reggie Bullock to keep Kawhi Morris and then bring in Kemba would be huge. Do I have the money to do it? Sacramento matched for him. Bastards. Bastards. Well, I probably will sign Reggie Bullock then since he was, uh, I believe, also an RFA. I'd at least like to keep him. I can be. I'm not surprised. Again, that's why it's so rarely worth going after, uh, yeah, Bullock is an RFA. Honestly, I'll just let him sign whatever deal since he's an RFA. Um, yeah, it just sucks, man. RFAs are so, so tough to get. It is what it is. Not too worried about it. Let's get through free agency. I still have CJ McCollum, which I don't hate. But there just wasn't the right deal for me. LeBron has returned to Miami after opting out. So has Dwayne Wade. Kyrie back with the Raptors. The Pacers land Nowitzki. Rondo back to the Celtics. Stoudemire with the Knicks. Bosch does go to Washington. So Bosch is the first of the big three in Miami to leave. Boozer with the Bulls. Rudy Gay goes to the Lakers. Young went to Washington as well. Fuck, maybe I should have gone for him then. Given that Washington is getting much, much better. Uh, Jimmy Butler leaves Sacramento, goes to Memphis. The Washington Wizards. Hold on. Greg Oden to Detroit. What a man. Bismack Biyombo. All right, Reggie Bullock is back. In terms of progression, Kawhi up to a 93. Got some other decent progression elsewhere that makes the team a little bit better. But again, I still have the glaring absence of another big star. A um, little bit of more regression than I was expecting to see there from your team. Ranger got worse. Higgins got a little bit better. You guys are in an interesting spot here, to be honest. I think we both are. Where there isn't the certainty for either of us at this stage that we are where we want to be. So, that makes it a little bit interesting at this stage. The 2016 draft coming up. Timberwolves only have their two picks. Whereas I have my own. I actually don't have any heat picks left, but I have my own and I have Milwaukee's first round picks this upcoming season. Uh, worth noting as well, the upcoming draft, Ben Simmons, Sabonis, Jalen Brown. I mean, again, it's a decent... Uh, I mean, anytime you get a guy named uh, Eugene Cheeks, it's always uh, a decent draft. And I mean, how could you not love Buddy Heald and Pascal Siakam? Um, and looking at the roster for me, it's fashion tell fair. I still got some point guard depth, got some shooting guard depth, but neither of them are stars. You got the forward depth. Like, I have depth across the board. I'm just lacking the star power that I wish I had. And banking on Pau Gasol may have proven to have been a pretty big mistake for you guys. It's Paul and Lawson who are still taking up quite a bit of money at this stage. Of course, Clay at shooting guard, not much behind him. You got Josh Smith and Granger at forward. Love and Higgins at power forward. And then Lyles, Plumtree, and now Christian Wood. It's an interesting situation where... What overall is Damian Lillard? Good question. 81. So nothing too crazy. A B potential. I don't think you have to sweat about that decision. Um, you guys are in an interesting spot where you have a lot of money tied up to guys who haven't gotten it done yet. But they are incredibly valuable. And that brings up the question of, in terms of a nuke, this is the type of core to use it with if you don't have faith in them just because of the absurd fucking returns you could get, especially amongst your top four. Paul and Lyle for Pau Gasol. <laughs> it's a trade the Crash Andrews has thrown out there. I 
I'd probably say no, because then I'd still have to trade Lyles anyway. If I'm going to have someone take time away from Clint Capella, I'd want it to be Pau Gasol, not someone who's slightly better than Capella. So I'd actually decline that. I would actually decline that. There are decisions to be made here, but both of our teams are in a very interesting spot at this stage.